I'm recording now. And what you can do, if you want to ask any questions, you can type in the box. You should be able to see it now. Or you can raise your hand and I will unmute your microphone. So that's what we'll do. Now, first of all, are there any questions from yesterday or this morning? I posted a couple of videos yesterday and two videos this morning. Did anybody have any questions? Anybody have any questions about any of the videos, the letter corrections that I posted? If you want to, well, I'll just turn all your microphones on just for once, but uh, I won't leave it all, all on because it might be. Just give me one minute. Let me go to that meeting. So I will invite them here because they are confused between two links. Just one minute. Mm -hmm. Because so, there is confusion regarding link. Well, go. there's like, there's two. There's like. Oh, starting. There's one starts at 10, one starts at half past. So we've got 30 minutes here and 30 minutes on the second one. So does anybody have any questions about the videos of the corrections I posted yesterday and indeed this morning? Everybody's mute. Very good, very good. You can see me if you want. You don't have to. <laughs> Here we are. Anybody got any questions before we get started? Well, no. So I haven't got time to, to uh, waste. We'll get down to business. And so I'm going to do a screen share. I've got the letters that... Uh, we were sent. Yep. I know you can't unmute. You have to raise your hand and I can unmute it for you. Or if you type into the box. The reason why is because if you don't, then you get lots of background noise. You get kids, you get traffic, you get dogs because not everybody's in a quiet space. Right. Mohammed. Hello. Hello. Yeah, hello. Good morning. Morning, morning. Yeah, my my letter also with you. I think Mr. Joseph uh, gave you. He just sent me four. I've got four. Okay. Um, <clears throat> take a look at them one by one. I don't know which is uh, which. But anyway, there's a few people here, so let's get started. Okay, so. I'm going to do the screen share. Let's have a look. I'll turn that off. Screen share on. Well, it should be this. Okay. Can you see that? Is that uh, large enough for you to see? Yeah. Is that big enough for you to see? Why is everybody on a different link? Uh, well, I'm making a, a recording of it so people can, um, you know, watch it later. It's nearly ten past ten now. We well, got fifty minutes left. Anyway, so we've we've seen we've seen this. We'll have a quick look. Okay, this is what we're talking about. Mr. McCarthy, 82, he's had his uh, knee amputated. We know all the social background, blah, blah, blah. Uh, he's going to be discharged. We can see what uh, we want the, the facility to do. 
and let's have a look at it. So first one, first one's first. Let me just put that out of the, the way. I went to for Mr. McCuffin Chief of Care. Okay, that's good. Who is being discharged today right, for recovery? Okay, yeah, very good. Relative pronoun a clause. Your further provision of acute care would be highly appreciated. Okay, that's that's good. You know, I would try to avoid everybody keeps using the same expressions. Highly appreciated. If you want to stand out. I would, you know, try and use something else. But that isn't bad. Oh, I forgot to check. Let me just check the word count. 232. Mm, that's not too bad. Not too, not too bad. Um, it doesn't really matter, but the more that you write, the more there's a danger that you'll be adding unnecessary uh, information. Okay, so let's have a look at this. He has been diagnosed, very good. Present perfect, passive. And dementia. If you've got the last one in the list, I would put a comma and have and. Due to cognitive impairment, his wife is a primary carer. Um, well, I see, yeah, but if he's impaired, he can't care for himself. So I suppose so. Okay. Initially, Mr. McCarthy was a metal infection by the foot wound for your devil. So to see now, okay. Good progress since then. And Kareem's actually well, a healthy wound, which was discharged. Actually, this um, letter is pretty good. It's pretty good. There's nothing for me to change. We've got his discharge prior because because here we take care, blah, blah, blah. Mm. This is pretty good. This is pretty good. Don't have to change anything. Don't have to change it. Well, the author knows, but uh, I I copied them out and I didn't put the the names down. But I have to say this is pretty good. It's pretty good. The grammar is perfect. I don't have to make any changes at all that is excellent so uh, let me i'll unmute but then hold on. Okay. So, if anybody wants to say oh. that um essay is pretty good i have one uh, concern that this doctor did like here you know he did not mention uh, vascular surgery. He is only mentioning. Mm, I think I'll put it in the office too much. Uh, too much. That's grand sound. I'll tell you what. Yeah, I think it might be better if um, right. You either raise your hand. Look, right, right. So what you can do, right? You either raise your hand, and I can turn your microphone on. Because if I turn everybody's on. There's too much background noise and it's a bit of a pain. So you can either raise your hand and I will turn your microphone on. Or if you want to, come and type. All oh, right. Mohammed? Uh, yeah, it's mentioned like uh, it, uh, which warrants a discharge in the third para. Mm -hmm. So we are actually discharging so is it okay to mention like that warrants of discharge it's pretty good yeah yeah mm. yeah i have to say this you know this is one of the best letters that i've seen uh in the last few days because it's pretty good <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it i mean you could rephrase a couple of things but in terms of grammar and in terms of a vocabulary there's nothing for me to, to fault. So that's excellent. It is. Very good indeed. Um, I'm in. Yeah. Hello? Yep, yep. We can hear you. I think you've turned... Hello? I'm trying to unmute. Right, your microphone... 
should be turned on now. Hello, hello? Can you hear, yeah, can you yeah. hear me now? You can hear you now, yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, I would like to ask you about the age after the name. How can, how's the best way to write it? Is it right to 80 years of age or age 82? How can I write it? Best way. It doesn't matter. Um, I would, you could put 82 years of age or age 82. What I don't like when I, I sometimes see people saying aged 82, like um, I had a, a letter and they said aged 82 years. Now that's not so good. We wouldn't really use that. So either, you know, age 82, you can put it in brackets or, you know, uh, aged 82 years or 82, sorry, uh, 82 years of age. That would be fine. That's a very minor point though. Uh, more important is the grammar and um, have you not selected irrelevant information? Because I, I saw a couple uh, of letters last week and the two authors had like, it was 350 words or 317 words and they put everything in, you know, so um, no. I have to say, this is pretty good, pretty good indeed. So it's better to write age 82 years, yeah? I would either say age 82 or 82 years of age, and this is good. Okay, the second question is, uh, I think it's better to write he was diagnosed because we are talking about the specific time, yes, in the past, yeah? Why we are using here, he has been diagnosed. Well, you, you, said, you, you, use, uh, you usually use the simple past when we know exactly when the past action occurred. But we don't. There's no um, a date. There's not, yeah. So it's better to write uh, has been diagnosed. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, right. So if you had a date, and yeah, you would obviously use the simple past. You say he was diagnosed on blah, 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 or on his initial visit on the 22nd, he was, etc. But because we don't actually know, and because one use of present perfect is to, you know, connect past and present, present perfect is fine. And also, um, we don't know, well, we can kind of guess who performed it, but we don't really know who gave the initial diagnosis. I presume it was the doctor, but again, one use of passive is if you don't know who performed the action or if it's not important. So that would work fine, yeah? Okay, thank you. That's okay. Anytime, we've got one more question, then we'll move on to the next one. Let me, hello, hello? Dr. Mubi. Yes. My, my concern was just uh, like uh, information in the case notes for uh, regarding vascular surgeon. I'm just asking for my general information. He is mentioning here surgeon. So it will not change the like uh, situation. We should uh, write uh, the vascular surgeon, not the surgeon. And then actually the second paragraph, he underwent surgery on advice of vascular surgeon. And uh, same doctor, he should be followed up after two weeks in the third paragraph. Which but what? he's mentioning with his oh, surgeon. Underwent what? Uh, with his surgeon. Um, I don't know. I mean, with his vascular. I possibly, to be more precise, you could include that. But um, I, it could be. Either it's not that important, or you can work it out from the context. As because to vascular surgeon was the one who given advice or recommended him. By himself, he did not done like. So he should because in the case notes it is given. My purpose is that we should follow what is given in the case notes only. Mm -hmm. Vascular surgeon. He should be seen. He should have follow visit with his vascular surgeon in two weeks. Oh. Well, I suppose so. Um, I was just looking at the grammar and vocab and the general 
um, with layout, but um, with a surgeon, vascular surgeon, um, would he be? Is there another kind of surgeon that he might be seeing? Yes, yes because it is especially mentioned in the case notes. Well, if, but if it's obvious from the context, I mean, is there any other kind of surgeon that he might that he might see? You yes, know, a I mean, surgeon, super surgeon is someone else. And vascular surgeon, there is difference. Well, well okay. Well, I would have thought from the, from the context, they would have been able to, to work it out. And um, the care home, do they really care who the surgeon is? Because they are being asked to accept this patient into, into, you know, into their care. And what do they have to do in regards to that? Do they really need to know or do they really care what the surgeon is or, you know, because that's not really anything to do with them. But anyway, okay, if um, you think it's important, I, I just thought it was obvious from the context of it's not that important in terms of what they are being asked. So, but again, it's a very minor point and you wouldn't be losing any marks over that okay. so that's pretty good right let's uh we've got a few more so let me turn this off and let's scroll back down and see what we've got for the second one so do, 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 do. who's been drawing on my board will you stop it please right so let's have a look mr mccarthy's good chat i mentioned uh, right for little, so you're perfect. now it's again you know people keep using the same expressions time and time again if you want if you want to stand out use something else okay mr mccarthy what is he aged 82 aged 82 well aged it's the past tense of age it's a verb so uh, don't use that to say i've aged 82 or 82 years of age so coffee is supposed to be discharged a day following for seeing Mr. McCarthy, I thought that he was being sent into there. He's being dis discharged, uh, is he not? So he's going. Let me have a look. What's happening? So he. This is a discharge, is it not? To a nursing home. Hmm. I thought so. So would we really have this here? Don't think so. It's a discharge. So seeing miss well, seeing implies it's a visit, but it's not. He's coming to live there for the time being. So we wouldn't really use seeing, I don't think. It's actually like the reputation that for those of you I appreciate it. Okay, well. If you want to make it better, you can include what you want them to actually do. And, you know, acute care, physio, and there's all of the other stuff too. Assistance, mobility, you can maybe mention he needs a wheelchair, etc. So if you want to put a bit more in the introduction, that would be good. Okay. Um, somebody seems to have their hand up. Uh, I'll just turn your microphone on. Hello? Zubair? Zubair? Hello. Ah, <coughs> I, I, I wanted to ask a question uh, like uh, in the previous uh, letter. Would it be right to use the uh, future tense in the regarding management plan uh, in what sense can you give me an, an example like uh, he will require your further care or like he will require uh, uh, assistance with activities of daily living you can do yeah because it is I mean well um, he's best um, there's more than one, there's like five or six different ways in English of uh, referring to the future. future. So yes. you could use will, future simple, you know, have, be going to, there's 
five or six, it doesn't make a lot of difference as long as it's clear from the, from the context what it is you want them to uh, to, to actually do. So you know, it's like I I don't think that you need to be uh, be necessarily over concerned with should it be this or that as long as it's not an error an obvious error like uh, well, we have seen in some of them it doesn't make a lot of difference i mean you are allowed a, a certain number of, of errors in any case it doesn't have to be 100 percent perfect only if you are aiming for an a well you know up to 500 i mean if that's your um, aim okay but good but uh, that letter would easily be sufficient it's pretty good and i i say this because i see quite a lot of letters and let me tell you <laughs> some of them are absolutely terrible unfortunately so that one's good and this one so far seems to be not so bad also so we'll carry on and then if we've got any questions i'll uh we'll come back okay 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 then So, medical history includes osteoarthritis. Okay. I would usually put a comma so the last one in a list ends with and. Just add admitted in. We would, we would usually use admitted to as a preposition. You can say in as in inside, but it's, it's usually tough. Or in at all. The medical study was on 6th of April. On 6th of April. And um, they just said 6th of April or April 6th. No need to have it like that. Which are my thoughts associated with fever and chills of two weeks duration. Now you've got to be careful here. Are the chills of two weeks a duration associated with the infected right foot? Or is it a separate? issue. Let's, let me check again, because this is always a good idea to keep going back. Uh, at least two weeks, didn't notice. Fever chills. Okay, so now, you know, I don't know if it's directly associated, but if you put a comma, then it's a separate issue. So that's what I would do, put a comma. So, this injury was unnoticed, okay, on the examination, on the examination, you, you could say that, but usually when you mention a noun for the first time, you don't need a definite article. So you could just say on examination, gangrene with an abscess was noted um, since, since blood culture. Um, since the blood culture or since hit well i would use a pronoun to make it clear since his blood culture shown graph as bacteria started followed by a below the knee amputation because they want you to write complete sentences by below an amputation on request from a vascular surgeon post opera's period was uneventful article required the post operative period was uneventful. Ms. McCarthy is a febrile one, it's clear. Okay, good. Uh, furthermore, moreover, he was advised. Well, you don't really need this. I mean, it was advised, not, it wasn't extra additional. It's just something that uh, was a part of it. He was a suggested. Why are you using this? He was a suggested, or it was a suggested, or a follow-up visit. So don't forget your subject and objects going the right way around. So probably uh, a follow-up visit was suggested. The vascular surgeon after two weeks, uh, after two weeks, you mean two weeks later. That's better, because after two like weeks, Vascular surgeon, two weeks later, that's better. And we'll reassess 
Uh, who's going to reassess? We don't know, so make it will be reassessed in passive. Okay, and will be reassessed in the future. So, furthermore, uh, oops, get rid of that too. A follow up visit was suggested with a vascular surgeon two weeks later and will be reassessed. Mm, hmm, yes, and he will be reassessed for stability between this long term care facility. Uh, so we've got a singular noun phrase. So I would put an indefinite article because we've got a noun, a phrase here, and a long-term care facility. Later, on the view, on the view, in the view. Oh, Mr. McCaffrey's defending an occupational therapy assessment. Hmm, so, no. Well, an assessment can't have a view. So we can't use that uh, in view of. Hmm. In view of is better. Okay. In view of, Mr. McCarthy, I suppose it was unsafe to just to discharge him home. We don't need to to discharge him home with his wife or to his home. So would you use consistency there? Is that fun to you? Therefore, referring to your care, uh, referring who to what, to make this a complete sentence, you know, uh, therefore, uh, he is being referred, or we are referring, or I am referring him. So we've got a verb and we have an object, but we don't have a subject. Well, no, that's the object, that's the indirect object that's a verb so we need a subject mm. there we go I am referring him to your care so subject of object and indirect object and secondary indirect object hmm okay should there be any queries okay not so bad not so bad well, I didn't put the names of the authors just in case, just in case you were embarrassed. <laughs> well, you know, some people might might be. Now, we seem to have quite a lot of hands in the air. Uh, who shall we? There is um, Glory. Hello, Kevin. Hello, this is Hello Kevin. This is a general question. Um, yeah. Uh, is the word count should be under 200? Uh, uh, is it uh, strict? Uh, no. I just want to know. It's not strict, no. no. Okay. It's just um, a recommendation. Uh, okay. They say 180 to... I, I find most people do about 200-ish, and there's, no, there's not a maximum. The only thing the guidelines say is if it's obviously overly, if it's too long then you'll get um a penalty where did i put the criteria uh where did i put it writing assessment criteria so what it does say in fact i'll pull this over here you can have a look at it so it depends so if it's a, if it's a little bit too long okay then you might drop down one but if it's really long Mm, far too long. Somebody sent me, I had a couple of letters last um, week and it was over 300. So that would be essentially that. So doesn't actually matter. As you see, it doesn't, it does not say that it's not like in the, the IELTS test where you have to write a minimum. Okay. So, uh, oh, 10 minutes, right. Um, okay, we'll stick with this. We've got a few minutes left, then we'll go to the second link. Okay, right, so, who else wants it to, uh, let me take, take these hands down, there's a few hands up, and then whoever wants to ask a question, put your hand, right, Dr. Mooby. Hello, hello, let me, hang on. 
Okay. Just want to ask uh, the on the examination is correct or on examination? Just to reassure. Well, if you're talking about the examination revealed on examination, it was re re um, revealed. You would need a pronoun. Um, it's just I took out the definite article because um, you were talking about examination in general. When you introduce something at first, you don't usually use a definite article. So on examination, upon examination, that would be fine. We just didn't need a definite article in front of that. Okay. So have we got somebody else? Mohammed. Yeah. Uh, I would like to ask you that uh, the regarding assessment, are they looking only regarding the language and the structure of these sentences? Or do they consider also the medical issues? Like uh, suppose in this letter, uh, actual uh, condition is neuropathy. Somebody has put like nephropathy or something like that. If there are any change, it doesn't matter in the in terms of marks or scoring. Well, if it's obviously wrong and possibly dangerous, then yes. Um, I don't know if you saw. Um, I was watching. Um, I was watching a video a while back uh, from E2, Jay, and he told a story about how someone used ambulate for amputate. Oh. Now, <laughs> that possibly, yeah. you, you know. You know why, I, why I'm asking? Because I, I, I came to know that mostly the assistants, they are non-medical. Uh, they are English teachers or something like that. So like here, it is mentioned nephropathy. Actually, it is neuropathy. It is oh, different. Right, right. Well, yes, that is uh, is true because, yeah. you know, if you're a doctor, you probably won't be uh, correcting, uh, <laughs> correcting okay. these. You will have something um, better to do. So most this is also why you can sometimes apply for a re-mark because... Right, they they probably do have a medical professional who they consult, but right. even it. But if you look at Jeff, um, uh, at Jay from E two, he is not a doctor. Yeah. So, so all those things that he says, you have to bear in mind that he's not a, a doctor. Also, he's a layman, mm -hmm. am I? So yeah. if it's something that is, you know, I mean. Of, uh, I I see your point. Um, if it's obviously incorrect from a medical perspective, then yes. But again, I'm not a a doctor. I'm just doing the best I can with what I see in the notes. How can a non medical person? Well, again, they do have some kind of training. I mean, I've I've done a course. They do have some training, but still, they are not professionals. They can be trained, but, and don't for, forget, as Hannah says, yes, they, you know, they, they, they have particular, um, uh, they have particular tasks for which when they are marking, they have a, a sheet of what they should include a model answer well model in terms of terminology so that's how they examine you the two guys who uh, who mark your letters they have a they have the criteria and they have a, a crib sheet or a checklist well, uh don't you think that the exam is in question now because if they are able to promote from C to B means around around 80 marks difference. So whether the previous examiner were not at that level or these are wrong. So don't you think about that? Mm, uh, well, how the how the mark works? It's, it's kind of strange, right? So 
you know that they've got two, right? So you, there's two separate um, examiners for both writing and speaking. But also, if you go to the OET website, they do a, a statistical analysis of everybody's uh, scores. So they have an expectation of what the scores should, should um, be. And they don't give the details of what uh, the a statistical analysis is. So the way they actually mark all the scores, it's not very clear. They don't give that information out. So they get all the scores and they do a analysis of some kind, running some kind of a, a test to see if the answers fall within certain expectations. If they don't, then those letters that are outside it are, are checked again. But they don't give a lot of information about how that works. So it's a bit of a, a mystery. So I'll we'll take another question. We've got a few uh, we've got here. How many? Three minutes and we'll go on to the link. So mm -mm -mm, who else wanted to ask a question? Let me turn that off on mute. Who wanted to ask? I'm in. Hello? Yes, I, will, I would like to ask about this result. It's written for the GBS. It's written what, sorry? It's written to GBS. What? This one? This letter, yeah. It's written for whom? Oh, um, well, according to the case notes, it's, uh, it's now this, because this is from the, um, the Kaplan book, which I did not, I didn't choose. It's not a clear, but it seems to be to a care uh, home. To a skilled so, facility. Yes, because uh, at first I found some difficulty in um, um, who I'm writing to. That's why I'm asking here. Ah, so, right. Well, I so, don't know. Um, Dr. Joseph chose this um, particular task. I think it's taken from the, the Kaplan book. So this is one of the, the practice tests. But, you know, if it's a discharge to it, so it's, Presumably, I would oh, assume okay. it's to an uh, yeah? What I would like to say, if we are writing, as you, as you mentioned, that we are writing for the nursing care, why should I tell him about the ulcer and uh, the fever? Why he, how, why he will care about these things? It's not important for him. Also, uh, if we are writing for the GP, why we are talking about the medical, care, medical history of this patient? Because he already knows the patient. And all of this depends. And if depends. He, it depends on, on the task. Every task uh, is different on purpose. So this is why um, you have to go straight to the task at first. And as you say, to find out who exactly you are writing to. And then you have to think, okay, if I were that person, what information would I need what would i want them to say in the introduction would i need the main medical issue first or would i need um, a chronology that would tell a story as to why they are asking me to do a certain action so it um it varies now we're going to switch to the second link now because we're almost out of time. So it's in the group. I'll see you back in a minute or two. Okay, so let me turn that off and we'll go to the second.